Yasas, hello everyone and welcome to the Growing Up Greek podcast with me, Kostadinos Vlahos or KV from Glossonauts and Tony Cariotis, the ep apagoreve the guy. And let's see what we got for you. Welcome to the episode. Okay, let's rock and roll. Mm. Welcome everybody. This is the show for the Greek language and culture, Kostadinos here, or KV, and with me is... Tony Kariotis. Oh, hello, Mr. Apagorevete. Yep, Apagorevete. <laughs> Νομίζω μόνο εσύ μπορείς να το πεις τόσο ωραία. Yes, that's what I, that's the one thing I can hold on to and be proud of. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we are very happy to be here. This is our first episode. Um, very first. We are very first episode. We are so excited to share our experiences, our little knowledge about everything that is Greek and feels Greek. Um, and let's jump into it. Tiles, pame. Let's do it. We got a, a Greek and a Greek American in the same room. So let's see how how this goes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that we can start first with who are we. So, uh, let me start. Yeah, my, name is, mm -hmm. my name is Konstantinos, or KV here. Um, by the way, these are the initials from my name. It's Konstantinos Vlahos. I was born and raised in Thrace, in a small city called Xanthi. Not Xanthi, Xanthi with X. Okay, and I'm a linguist. I love languages. I love teaching and learning languages. I already speak um, some languages, uh, and I have a goal, and this is to make Greek viral. Mm. And we can say more things about me later on. Tony, Tiles, Desmas Piosise. I am Tony Cariotis. A lot of you might have known me from, yep, or just from my uh, Greek content that I do, Greece content. Like you said, you're trying to make Greek viral. Well, I'm trying to make Greece viral. Um, yeah, I'm, baby. From, I'm, I'm a Greek American, born in Boston, Massachusetts, in the United States. Uh, I'm a first generation Greek. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur by nature. So I just love trying new things. Adventures, business ideas, creative ideas, anything that I can have full control over. I just, I just love to come up with new ideas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. And I love coming to Greece. I'm in Greece often. And these last few years, I've stepped it up a bit just because of all the social media stuff that I do for Greece. And that's what led me to come up to Xanthi and meet you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this show, yeah. this show is not just something we came up with today. This is months in the making. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is something that we really wanted from the first time that we met each other. And do you want to say a few things about how we got in contact and how we met each other? So from one side, we have a crazy guy from a little provincial city in Greece uh, wants to make Greek viral. And on the other side of the world, literally, we have another crazy guy uh -huh. living in Boston wants to make Greece viral. Okay, share the story. Yes. I, will, I will let you know. So I started off where I was a guest on your Instagram live series, which was really cool. Um, mm -hmm. That was, uh, was an honor to appear on that show and talk a little bit of Greek and Greek language and maybe the, the why I came up with the word apagorevete and why do I say it with such an accent. I say it with such an accent that I get a lot of comments by people that think I'm not Greek because of the way I say it. They're like, you don't even pronounce it correctly. You shouldn't say that word. And I'm like, do you realize like these are, I mean, character, like I know how to say it. It's just a character. Um, and then we kind of said, let's, let's try to meet up when I come to Greece. And when I was in Greece, I uh, usually the last few years since I've been uh, with my girlfriend, now fiance, actually, I should say, in case she's listening. Nazisete. <laughs> um, Thank you, thank you. Um, obviously, now that I'm with her, I go up to her part of Greece, which is Kavala, Lefteropoli. And so 
I timed it so that when I go up there, I'll make a day trip to Xanthi. And there you were waiting to show me the town. Took me to Old Town, showed me around, and we had some lunch. Uh, fágame, uh, fágame, giro. Yes, yes. Que glico. Que glico. And the hero had ketchup and mustard in it, which was great. Uh, <laughs> on, yes, and then, we, and then we, wait. Tony, wait, wait. Uh, what do yeah. you mean? This is this is ketchup, mustarda are the basic uh, ingredients for apola. When you ask for apola, yes. Um, yes. A gyro, a gyro apola. Yes. ketchup, mustarda, cremidi, domata, patates, gyros. Boom! That's it, baby. Easy peasy. One hundred percent. One hundred. Depends where you are in Greece. I like. Yes, I agree with you. I like it that way. Uh, but I like both. Some days I like the ketchup mustarda. Some days I like tzatziki. But anyway, mm-hmm. so then yeah, we went for Rizogalo, which was really really good, and uh, yeah, we and then we ended up at the beach. It was a great day. It was a great day. You mm-hmm. can't complain. And that day we make also a video on the beach. We about made a few, we made a few videos. A we made few videos. videos. Also. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did a couple of power edit episodes, and we did um, a few of the videos that you posted on Glossonauts, where um, we're talking about Gringlish words and phrases. And all that good stuff. So it was a well, it was a fun day. Mm-hmm. Um, and the uh, I want to sh- I want you to elaborate a bit more about Xanthi and especially the old uh, the old city Palapoli. Uh, how did you find uh, the place? Uh, yeah, it was really nice. It was beautiful. It was a nice place to walk around. Uh, you, you told me a little bit about some of the buildings. How. It's still a living village. Uh, people still do live there. There was even a school we walked by that was really cool. And mm-hmm. then there was one of your uh, there was one building that I think you had uh, an eye for. You, you it was one of your favorite looking ones, and you were saying how I think it was recently sold or it was recently for sale. But yeah, mm-hmm. it was a really nice town. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Uh, let me say this for the people that they hear us: that the old city of Xanthi is the biggest um, traditional. A city in Greece that is still uh, it's it's still a living part of the city. I mean, there are people that they actually live in the old city of Xanthi. Perhaps mm-hmm. now you're going to think that oh come on, uh, Plaka in Athens is an old part. But if you think about it better, Plaka is most for tourists and has like shops and stuff like that. The old city of Xanthi is like uh, it's uh, an, a part of the city that is still. Uh, you know, living with kids, uh, grandmas, papudes, yayades, people living there. Yeah. So, Tony, while you, we were traveling in Xanthi, I had an idea. I noticed that, okay, you speak Greek. That is true, you speak Greek. And I think that we can make your Greek better, even better than they are. All right. So, one of the concepts of this uh, little podcast is me trying to help you implicitly. You will not even realize it, okay? And for the people that can see the picture here, they perhaps they recognize uh, a greeting here in Greek, which is Yasu. Yasu, two words. Um, so, I already started implicitly, implicitly uh, in teaching you Greek. We will see I how love this, this idea. goes. I love this idea. That mm-hmm. that could be one of the side missions of this show, the side quest of make Tony speak perfect, make Tony speak great Greek. <laughs> okay. Άρα αυτό σημαίνει ότι θα μιλάμε και ελληνικά, που και που. Ναι. Ωραία. That was a big um... word, ναι. Οπότε... <laughs> 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 Θα καλύψουμε διάφορα θέματα. We will cover many topics and we want you that you listen or you see us to help us in the covers that, on, the, on the topics that you want to see in our uh, in this show. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that we can start with language and how people in uh, uh, in the states, like the Greek diaspora, as we call them. Um, and more specifically, what is your experience in learning Greek? Mm, I think this is very, very interesting, and many people will, no, uh, you know, have. I agree. No, we definitely. Use. I think talking about language will be a lot of fun. Not only will I be able to learn a few more words and vocabulary, but I think it'll be interesting to talk about how 
it's different. Like Greek in Greece and there's Greek here. It's different because here we implement English words in, in that Gringlish format. And nowadays in Greece, even in Greece, English words are starting to appear to help shrink bigger Greek words. So I think there's some interesting dynamics about diving into that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so, share us your experience with, uh, with the language, Metalinica. Uh, my experience with the language, you, people will be shocked. It's actually my first spoken language was Greek. Um, as, a, so, as a kid, as a baby, my first... So, when mm -hmm. it, Στο σπίτι μιλάτε, μιλούσατε ελληνικά, δηλαδή. Yeah, when I was μάμα. first starting to talk, uh, the first language I learned was English. I mean, Greek. The first language I learned was Greek. Um, and then, obviously, growing up in America, you're going to start speaking English too. Then it became a mix. Then I completely lost the Greek, and it was just English. Uh, then I went to Greek, Greek school. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Sarcastic. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, basically... I had my regular day of school, and then at 4 p.m. till 6 p.m. I on uh, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I had to go to school for Greek. So okay, for someone okay. who just didn't like being at school in general, I had to do two schools. Let me open a parenthesis here. Parenthesis, okay, yeah. a Greek word. Mm, this is the common reality of all uh, Greek students in Greece from the year of from elementary school until high school. Ε, από την πρώτη δημοτικού μέχρι την τρίτη ηλικίου δηλαδή. So this is the normal thing for Greek students. This is what we do from when we were very young. So after school, uh, we attend uh, English classes, German classes, French classes in private schools. And later on in high school, uh, many students go to what we call Frodisteria. Frodisteria is like a private school that helps you learn the lessons taught in the uh, regular school. How do you think about that? Interesting. All right. No, that's that's a lot. All right. Well, we had a good... Because <laughs> after like the third year or the fourth year, you only had to go Mondays and Fridays. So it was all right. Mm -hmm. It was all right. And then we had to do like our, our recitals, Bimata, that we had to practice for on stage. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> and where? Where where do you perform? In church? So basically, the the the, yeah, the 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 Greek schools, at least most of them, the one I went to is is hosted in uh, in a church uh, where they have like the school in the in the lower level. They have a bunch of rooms, uh, and then you go into the auditorium and for Christmas and Pascha, and then the end of the school year. So I think there was three recitals. We had to do our pimata, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. not Easter for March twenty fifth for Independence Day. March Independence Day. Mm -hmm. um, so then I learned it again, and then it became like Gringlish and uh, a lot of Gringlish. And then, honestly, the older I got, I still knew how to speak it. I, Greek school helped. I knew I know all the words of standard communication. Um, and then it became where I, I was predominantly speaking English around the house as we got older. Um, I still know my Greek. I just, when I'm in the U.S., I don't practice it at all. I don't speak it at all. Very, when I say at all, it's probably like yeah, 90% yeah. Mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. You know, the truth about language learning in general, I think, is that uh, you lose it, you use it or you lose it, as we, yeah. as we say in English. Yeah, the longer I'm in Greece, the better it gets. Mm -hmm. and, and language first and foremost is, you know, communication. So you you said it yourself when you started learning the first language that you spoke was Greek because you, both your parents were Greek so in every in every possible communicational situation in the house you were with your parents so yeah the communication should be it was in Greek uh, which I think is the, is the case for many people of the diaspora you know we I, we have many students that they share exactly the same story as you said they start learning Greek in uh, when they were very young. Uh, after that, when you know they were more out of the house and they were to the uh, American school or uh, you know they have like activities outside. So that is why when, that is when the English language was were, was used more and more. Mm -hmm. uh, the parents had the the wish the children to learn Greek, so they went to the Greek to the Greek school. But the children, okay, they, they, you were already speaking Greek before you joined the school, right? Right. 
that I think what you learned there was more like a more you know you learn how to read or to write per perhaps yeah no we learned the past tense the pretense the yeah details, the grammar grammatiki how grammatiki. to read how to write where to put your tonus grammatiki by the way if yeah. you hate grammar grammar is a greek word for it comes from grammatiki there you go uh, okay grammatiki um so yeah mm -hmm. that is interesting and the kid yeah. and so but it. one thing i do realize when i'm in greece a couple things obviously yes the longer i'm there the better my greek gets but for mm -hmm. some odd reason my greek becomes really really good when i get into a taxi cab oh okay why because i know if i speak any english <laughs> the, the the meter flies Yeah, 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 yeah. A five euro ride becomes 30 euros. All, all of a sudden, all of a sudden. Yeah, he just, he acts like he's pressing something on the radio, but he's pressing a button that makes the meter go fast. Mm -hmm. I think the same is happening in Boston, right? If I, for, for, for I think this is a common pattern or not. You want to say um, something in particular about the, the, the how, how do you call the taxi the this, this uh, profession in Greek, in Greek, in Greece. Yeah. No, it happens in everywhere. It happens everywhere. If they see a tourist and they just give you like a, mm -hmm. oh, I'll bring you there. Give me 50 bucks. But good thing there's apps now that track it. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to say something else also about the, the green list that you say. Uh, how do yes. you know? I, before I met you, I, I, I was more familiar with the term Greek list. Yeah, Greek both list. work. Both work. I'm not saying like one's the right one. They both. Yeah. I think they both kind of like explain the same thing. Exactly. Okay. It's exactly the same. So I noticed in the comments when we did that video, people were like, "It's not Greeklish. It's Greeklish." I'm like, "Come on! Like, there's no official word. We're just okay. we're just picking one." Okay. Uh, for the audience that um, that don't know the this video. Um, guys, you can check this in our uh, accounts on Instagram. It was a video where I was uh, saying some Greek words, or, or uh, it was some some words that are different in Greek, Greece, and Greek. Yeah, and well, you would say a word, and I would tell you the word we use in America. For instance, prosexe to caro erhite. We're uh, saying, be careful, the car is coming. But really, you would say to a maxi or to a torquinito. Ποιες άλλες λέξεις είπαμε, θυμάσαι? Ναι, I remember. Το ρούφι, which is the roof on the house, was the σκοπί. Σκεπί, σκεπί. Σκεπί, σκεπί, βέβαια. The other one is the πόρτσι, instead of balcony. Uh, the yarda instead of the yard, the garden, mm -hmm. uh, avli. Mm -hmm. uh, we say, we're basically taking the English word and we're adding an a at the end. Like yarda, car, or just, yeah, an, mm -hmm. I, a vowel at the end. Mm -hmm. What's another one? Uh, oh, vale gazi sto caro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is, this is strange because gazi has a different meaning in Greek. So if you say yes. gazi is when you want to, you know, you're in the car and you're in a hurry and you say something like patagazi. So go yes. fast. Yeah. But, But for in us, green, gas, green is green fuel. <laughs> gas is fuel. So gazi is like, uh, yeah, benzini. Uh, we say in Greek, benzini. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is happening because Greek, as I mean, for all of the audience that speak English, for example, Um, the one major difference is that in Greek language the suffixes are so 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 important. We have different suffixes to show the person in the verbs. For example, tragudo is I sing or peso I play. Uh, we also use it for singular and plural. We also use different cases in the nouns and stuff like that. So they are very, very important. And we, I, I think Greek list took this feature of language, the suffixes, and they, like a Lego, they connected it with the English word that, English words that you, that you use it all the time. And this is something else. 
If you notice, the words that you use in Greek list are everyday words, right? You don't say, for example, um, words that you, you use very re rarely, right? So they are high frequency words that you were mm -hmm. listening, you are using, and that's where the mixture, the mix. Uh, that's well said. I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good mm -hmm. stuff. And okay, language is one very interesting topic that you know really it fascinates me. When I was younger, I was born and raised in Xanthi, which is a small city, but in terms of um, you know the vibrance, in terms of you know uh, multicultural, multicultural issues and multilingual issues. So when I was growing up, I was exposed to a uh, Greek. Um, Turkish, um, Russian, uh, okay, English and German at school. So I was always this in this context. And also my heritage, my grandparents are from Pondus region. So they were speaking a Greek dialect. Are you aware of the Greek dialects? They were speaking Pondiaka. Mm. Um, you know that we have actually many dialects dialects in greek uh, for sure greek. For sure being from kalimnos i know in kalimnos we have some words that you don't hear anywhere else exactly exactly uh dialects dialects like podiaka ehumeta uh, tsakonika stibeloponiso ehumeta diaphoris dialectus um, well, I would assume like all the regions around Greece ha kind of have their own dialect, no? Um, let's yeah, but in terms of more more wide geographical regions, what is very interesting is that uh, in every place, I mean, you find differences in the pronunciation of words. So it, we're not talking about a different dialect, but we're talking about a different in pronunciations. For example, sure. for example. In Thessaloniki and in Northern Greece in general, I think I, I do this sometimes. They have a very, uh, we call it Pahi L. They don't say L, they say like L. Thessaloniki. They don't say Thessaloniki. Yeah. Thessaloniki, like a L. Yeah. And it's uh, something yeah, yeah, that yeah. is very funny. Uh, or yeah, for you example. Ever hear an, uh, you ever hear a Kalimian lady talk? No, no, never. I want, I want to. You want to hear it? <laughs> I'll give you my best Kalimian lady. Uh... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, crazy. Okay. That, that's, the lady. that's the Kalimian lady. That's the Kalimian lady. Okay, that's great. I'm very interesting. Mm. Um, so, as you see here, Yasu. Uh, because Yasu. I, Yasu, okay, you already know this. It's a very, it's a fantastic the, way. Yasu to... makes, it reminds me of that uh, Yakovidi song where the phone starts ringing. Mm -hmm. And the song starts off with just a phone ring, and she goes, nah. He goes, Yasu. That just yes, reminds me every time. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can use actually Yasu everywhere, right? You see yeah. someone, Yasu. You like you, you have a conversation and you go to your work and the other person to hear, Yasu. Uh, we're yeah. drinking, we say Yasu. Uh, yeah. Okay, use it. It's very interesting. And do you know uh, what is the meaning of this? Where does it come from? Yasu. Uh, um, I mean, I would just guess the translation, like for you, for your health, towards you. Exactly. Am I right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the okay. ya part is the abbreviation of, I mean, the small version of igia. Igia, yep. uh, health in Greek. And su is, yeah, yours, exactly what you said. Yeah. Personal pronoun. Sort of like yasu. how yamas is for all of us, yasu for you. Bango, bingo. So I'm catching on quick. Don't worry. I'm so catching stop. on quick. And you know, in Greek, uh, we have five vowels only A, E, I, O, U. And the U, for example, in English, you use only one letter, the U. 
in Greek we yeah. only you need two letters for that omicron and y yes. u yes to make this sound uh, so what else do you want to say before we close this very first episode of uh, uh, I can't believe we're already done. That went by really quick. Mm -hmm. They say time flies when you're having fun, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited for this because I think it's a, it's going to be a fun show. Um, we're going to be talking about basically all everything that comes with growing up as a Greek, growing up as a Greek American, the language, uh, the differences in the language, the culture. What is it like growing up as a teenager? What is it like growing up as a young adult in each country? Uh, why do Greek Americans and Greek Greeks from the diaspora love coming to Greece so much? Is it because we long for it? We holding on to the culture, and also some of the the differences about like cultural activities. Because I've noticed over the recently, I've I don't know about recently, but I've always noticed how here the Greeks we hang on to everything that we can that's Greek. So like kids grow up going to everything Greek, Greek school, Greek dance. They play sports with just their Greek friends. They go to Greek this greek that and then i asked people in greece i'm like oh you i'm sure you grew up you went to greek dancing you went to this like we have that we we know it like why we're but here like a lot 90 percent of the greeks go sign up for that and mm. partially it's because we don't have greece here and that's the closest thing that we can have for greece mm -hmm. uh i would assume that's the main reason mm -hmm. um but yeah no this will be a fun show and hopefully uh if you guys enjoyed this one, make sure you subscribe, like, all the good stuff to make sure that notifi turn notifications on, follow us on our social medias. Uh, we'll let you know when, when this show has its social media. But for now, you can follow us at uh, yours is at Glossonauts, mine's at I am Greece. And I'm sure soon mm -hmm. we'll have one for this show once we uh, finalize all those details. Mm hmm. And I want to uh, add that we really want to add uh, value to the, the listeners. We are going to mm -hmm. share mostly uh, our you know personal thoughts and personal experiences. I will do this from the perspective of uh, of the Greek guy. You will do this from the perspective. Yes, the perspective and that's what I love about the, the dynamic of the show. We have we have the guy in Greece and we have the guy in America. Both a Greek. Both grew up two different styles, additions of being a Greek. Mm -hmm. And I think that'll be an interesting dynamic. Maybe once in a while, we'll bring on some people that can add some value. And like you said, value is the most important. We're not just doing this just to put our faces out there and just talk for no reason. We, we <laughs> hope that this is a show that you can come and learn some Greek, learn about, you might hear some stuff here that you thought that only you went through as a Greek, but really everyone's going through it. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going through. We all, we we all go through a winter in America, and we can't eat a good choliatiki because there's no tomatoes. But mm -hmm. and, and that's a struggle. And, or we can't find good feta if you're not near the Greek market. Like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. Okay, okay. I'm I'm in. You persuade me already. So let's do this. <laughs> awesome, awesome. You want to put a wrap on it? Mm, like. Just a closing. Uh, thanks everyone for listening, uh, and mm -hmm. we'll we'll uh, we'll talk to you guys next time on this sh beautiful okay. show. Hey, tell them your name, and I'll tell them my name. Okay, okay. So that was the first episode of uh, experiencing of what it is to growing up with this Greek atmosphere and growing growing up in this Greek atmosphere. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we do. So this is not a goodbye. This is just a hello, just a Yasu from KV and Tony Cariotis. Yep. If you don't listen to the next episode, uh, bye. Uh, bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Thank you, KV. Was this was fun. We'll do it again uh, very, very soon. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Yasu. Alema.